Hi, welcome to the second episode of Mike's Collection. I just posted my first video yesterday and I was, uh, it was a learning experience. Uh, it's, yeah, I have a lot, I have a lot of work to go before it's, uh, I'm happy with the final product. But I was eager to get another video up, so here I am again. You won't see much improvement in quality from the last one to this one, but uh, hopefully, uh, eventually you will. So, I mentioned in my first video that I'd like to have a co-host. Uh, no luck with that yet, but I do have Casey here with me. Uh, she'll be sitting with me for a minute. She's not normally allowed in the man cave, I'd say for obvious reasons, but uh, yeah, since I'm home alone, uh, it's hard for me to come in here and record anything without the animals scratching at the door looking for attention. And now uh, my cat Buster has just wandered in as well, so I'll have to keep an eye on him. Um, so I'm still not really going to get into a uh, format for the show yet. I know I mentioned on the first video that I might be talking about uh, old issues of Toy Fair magazine. Uh, that's still probably what I'll do once I get into the swing of things. But for now, this is again more or less just me testing things out and uh, learning. So this will just be another short uh, practice video. And uh, I figured since this is called Mike's Collection, oh sorry, I think I gotta get the cat out of here. Bear with me one sec. Casey, get out of here. Get, get, get. Right, so, okay, animals are out of the room temporarily. So, um, what I was saying, so since this is called Mike's Collection, I thought it might be good early on to show you my collection. It's more than what you're seeing here. Um, so yeah, that's what we'll do. I'll kind of show you around the corners of my man cave here today. Um, but first, before we get into that, I did want to talk very briefly about Toy Fair 2019 that's happening in New York City right now, um, where they're revealing all the, well not all the new toys, but a lot of new toys that are going to be coming over the next few months. Now it really gets into full swing on Saturday, Sunday, um, but there were a few reveals today. Um, not a whole lot for me to get excited about. Um, there was, uh, Hasbro showed a, an Ecto-1 Ghostbusters car that's a Transformer, which is kind of neat, but nothing that I really feel I need. Um, I didn't buy any of the Star Wars Transformer crossover figures when they did those a few years ago. I'm a pretty strictly uh, G1 Transformers fan. I just like my, you know, my 80s characters for the most part. Um, for superheroes, there wasn't anything shown really for uh, Marvel. Uh, DC was mostly statues, but uh, there was some kind of cool looking uh, luchador wrestlers, uh, versions of Batman, uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, and a couple of villains, which looked kind of neat. Uh, I'd be kind of curious to hear more about those. Um, there was some other odds and ends. Um, the biggest one was Funko. As I mentioned yesterday, I do collect Funko Pops. I don't go crazy buying all of them. Uh, I just buy the ones from properties that I like. But I like a lot of properties, so I have quite a lot of pops already. I've got over 200 of them, and there seems to be no, no slowing. Um, some of the ones they showed today that uh, have me excited are uh, Jaws. So you, there's, of course, Bruce the Shark from Jaws. As well as uh, the three heroes, so Quint and uh, Brody and Hooper. So I have those characters as reaction figures, which uh, I was pretty stoked to get those a couple of years ago, but uh, I'm equally excited to get them as pops. That'll be pretty cool. Um, also The Office. I love The Office. Um, I, I hope they do all of them because I would like Kelly and Ryan and everybody. Um, I think they showed six or seven different characters that they plan to release. 
So um, maybe I'll pop images up of him here. So there's Michael, uh, I think two versions of him. Uh, Jim, again, two versions of him. So one of them will be the chase where he's got his uh, book face costume on. And there'll be Pam, uh, Kevin, who's got his uh, pot of chili, I believe it was, that he spilled all over the floor of the office. Uh, Dwight um, and Toby. Uh, I think that's all the ones that they showed. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited to get those. Um, and then there was a ton of other pops. My, uh, I follow Funko on Instagram, and when I came home from work and I was scrolling through my newsfeed, it was just new reveal, new reveal, new reveal. Uh, Sanford and Son, some anime properties, uh, Dawson's Creek, uh, just a ton of stuff. So yeah, if you're a Funko fan, you might want to go Google Toy Fair 2019 and see what new stuff is coming out, or go to their Instagram. Um... So yeah, I think that was about it for Toy Fair for now. Um, my next video, I'll probably be talking about all the stuff that they reveal on Saturday, which that should be the good stuff. I'm looking forward to seeing new Marvel Legends, uh, new Star Wars Black Series, uh, new Transformers, uh, all kinds of stuff. Some cool news that did come out is uh, Netflix is doing a new Transformers series as well, I guess. I didn't really get any details on that, but that, that could be potentially pretty cool. So let's uh, begin the tour of the man cave. So first up, we get some GI Joes and some Funko Pops. So I'll just uh, walk around the room and show you this stuff. So hopefully I don't give anybody vertigo or whatever. So you see here, I have a, a good variety of uh, Funko Pop figures. Uh, I've got all the Hellboy ones in the back there, Napoleon Dynamite, Mr. T, Macho Man. Got the G.I. Joe guys there. Um, a bunch of randos from movies like Taxi Driver and Clockwork Orange, Labyrinth, Rainbow Bright, and Mr. Rogers. Back there we got The Crow, which is my all-time favorite movie. Uh, a bunch of DC characters. Um, again, a bit of a mishmash of everything. Some Guns N' Roses, some UFC fighters. Uh, there we've got the guys from Saga, a couple of Walking Dead. Um, then we've got some Blade Runner, Conan, Braveheart, Elvira. And yeah, at the bottom, I know you can't really see them, but we got some Preacher, Rocketeer, uh, Dig Dug, you know, other random things like that. Over here we've got uh, Star Trek, some Jurassic Park. we got Home Alone there. Uh, Ford Act, Master of the Universe, Planet of the Apes, uh, Parks and Rec, Street Fighter. We've got some Marvel. Uh, I don't really, I'm a huge Marvel guy, but I don't collect Marvel Funkos just because I'm not a big fan of the bobbleheads. Same as Star Wars. And I'm actually glad because it keeps me from buying those. And if I can keep this collection somewhat minimal, that's you know, great. Um, now, I, I do have a kind of a collection within a collection here. I collect Batman Pops. You can see I've got a, a good variety of different colored Batmans there. And my pop collection has outgrown those two shelves that they were originally on. So um, you'll see over here, they've just been accumulating on the uh, windowsill. So again, we've got some like Lost Boys, Nightmare Before Christmas, Godzilla, King Kong back there. A little bit of everything. Over here, this is my... Kind of makeshift photo studio. Um, so there you'll see Luke and Billy that I showed you yesterday. Uh, over here, um, some more guys from photos that I recently took. Uh, a couple more pops over here, mostly He-Man. They're hidden there amongst Trypticon. And even my windowsill, I ran out of room. So even though I don't typically like to keep things boxed, I started keeping them boxed up. So now all the new Funkos that I buy uh, I take some pictures for Instagram and then I put them back in their box and stack them up here over behind the door. So, back to G.I. Joe for a second. So, G.I. Joe is 
kind of my number one. I, I love G.I. Joe. So I have a ton of vintage stuff, but none of it's on display. Just my uh, modern era stuff is on display. So this shelf here, it's uh, uh, nearly complete modern era collection. Like, I don't buy absolutely everybody. Like, there's probably been, like, 40 different Snake Eyes figures, and I probably have 10 or 15 of them. I really don't feel the need to own every version of every character, but, like, this shelf here is, like, all Cobra Commander. But he has a lot of cool looks, so uh, what are you going to do? Um, some more, some of my favorites in here. This guy here in particular, which is uh, Cobra Dierko or Steel Cobra. That was one of the first uh, presents I got from my fiance Vanessa, and uh, yeah, he's really cool. So there's not a whole lot of room to read over here. There's my Dreadnought shelf, Python Patrol, uh, Iron Grenadiers. Now, it is, to those of you not in the know, this might not seem like anything special, but uh, those of you who are fellow Joe fans, will probably make note that I do, I've clearly put a lot of money into this as I have pretty much all of the convention sets that have been released over the years and all the figure subscription services. So, yeah, a lot of Destros and stuff in there. Yeah. So that's Cobra. Uh, on top shelf here, they're I've got a couple of jets on display. I don't usually display vehicles. I don't have room for it. But these ones here were kind of cool. That's G.I. Joe Jet uh, Starscream. And then I've got a big old Metroplex hiding in there too. Um, so that shelf was all Cobra. Over here, past the Pops. We get to the G.I. Joes. So again, I've got a couple more jets hiding up here along with Predator King and Devastator. Along the top here, these aren't Joes, but they're the Marauder Task Force figures which are compatible and in many ways superior to G.I. Joe. I'll showcase those on a, on a future episode. So here's the Joe collection. Again, those of you in the know will uh, quickly spot that I have most everything that's uh, come out since the modern era began in 2007. So there's all my, uh, my snake eyes. I've got the October Guard back there. That's a highly sought after set. I'm happy to get that. And on the bottom, my favorite vehicle is the Cobra Hiss Tank, so I do have those on display. Most of my other vehicles are all packed away, but I can't help but put the Hiss Tanks out because they're so great. Hey, so my uh, tour video did take longer than I anticipated. It was about 27 minutes in total, and YouTube won't let me upload it uh, currently because it's longer than 15 minutes. So I'm going to split it down the middle here, and I'll post the second half of the video later. Um, just in advance, I want to apologize for the sound quality of the second half of the video. I realized uh, as I was walking around the room, my hand was covering the mic at certain times, so it gets a little muffled. Uh, anyways, so I hope you enjoyed part one, and uh, stay tuned for part two. Thanks.